The ongoing Niger coup marks a significant turning point, not just in the history of the nation, but for the entire continent of Africa. In order to understand the context and impact of this event, it is essential to examine the historical backdrop of French colonization in Niger, as well as neighboring countries like Burkina Faso and Mali. This video will provide an overview of colonial history, and then chronologically outline the series of events that led to the Niger coup and its subsequent transformation into a revolution for a new Africa. Back in the 1800s, European countries were basically playing a big game of who's in charge with each other. They were all about claiming huge chunks of land and making the most of whatever riches they found there. France was particularly interested in colonizing West Africa, so they went on this whole adventure to take over the region and Niger, along with its neighbors Burkina Faso and Mali, became like the epicenter of France's colonial dreams. France's colonization of Niger can be traced back to the late 19th century when European powers competed for control over Africa. In the so-called Scramble for Africa, France established its presence in the region, including Niger, through military conquest and treaties with local chiefs. The French colonial rule, which began in the early 1900s, imposed political, economic, and social structures that favored the interests of the colonizers over those of the indigenous populations. In the late 19th century, France established a colonial presence in Niger through military conquest and treaties with local leaders. Later on, in the early 1900s, Niger became an integral part of French West Africa, a federation of French colonies in the region. French colonial policies exploited Niger's natural resources, primarily uranium and other minerals, leading to economic disparities and limited benefits for the local population. In 1946, France granted Niger the status of a French overseas territory, allowing limited representation in the French parliament. Late 1950s independence movements gained momentum across French West Africa, including Niger. And on August 3, 1960, Niger achieved independence from France, with Hamani Diori becoming the country's first president. In the years before and preceding 2010, Niger found itself entangled in a web of challenges, creating a volatile atmosphere within the country. These challenges ranged from political instability to economic inequality, all while allegations of corruption swirled around the government like a relentless storm. In the month of April 1974, a momentous event unfolded in Niger as Lieutenant Colonel Saini Kaunchi orchestrated a military coup, effectively terminating the 14-year reign of Hamini Diori. This audacious move involved the suspension of the country's constitution and the dissolution of the National Assembly, marking a significant shift in the nation's political landscape. Taking charge of the government's reins, Kaunchi established the formidable Supreme Military Council, SMC, comprising 12 influential members who assumed control over the affairs of the state. This council wielded immense power and influence, shaping the direction of the country during this transformative period. Tragically, amidst this tumultuous upheaval, reports emerged of a tragic loss of life. It was estimated that approximately 20 individuals met their untimely demise during the course of these events, further underscoring the gravity of the situation and the human toll it exacted. Overall, the military coup led by Lieutenant Colonel Saini Kaunchi ushered in a new era for Niger, characterized by the suspension of democratic institutions and the consolidation of power within the hands of the Supreme Military Council. Also in January 1996, a group of army officers orchestrated a coup, successfully toppling President Mahamein Ousmane and Prime Minister Hama Amadou. Their rationale for this audacious act stemmed from a perceived political impasse that posed a threat to ongoing economic reforms. However, this bold move incurred the wrath of France, the former colonial power which expressed its displeasure at the turn of events. Following the coup, leadership of the country was assumed by Lieutenant Colonel Ibrahim Bear Manasara, who held the position of Armed Forces Chief of Staff. Manasara emphasized that the primary objective of the coup was not to dismantle the multi-party democratic system, but rather to facilitate a fresh beginning. The intention was to break free from the political deadlock that had hindered progress and to pave the way for a rejuvenated political landscape. The coup and subsequent ascension of Lieutenant Colonel Manasara 
marked a significant shift in Niger's governance. While the action was driven by a desire to safeguard economic reforms, it also ignited tensions with the former colonial power. Under Maynassar's leadership, the country embarked on a new chapter, with the hope of revitalizing democracy and overcoming the political obstacles that had previously impeded progress. In April of 1999, Lieutenant Colonel Ibrahim Bear Maynassara, the leader of Niger, met a tragic end when he was ambushed and killed by dissident soldiers at Niamey Airport. This untimely demise marked a turning point and set the stage for yet another coup in the country's tumultuous history, adding to its legacy of political instability. Seizing the opportunity, Commander Dawuda Malam Wonk, who held a prominent position within the Presidential Guard, assumed power following Maynassar's assassination. Wonk promptly declared that Niger would undergo a transition towards civilian rule, with plans for an elected president to be in place by the year 2000. This announcement brought a glimmer of hope for a return to stability and democratic governance. In the subsequent presidential election, Mamadou Tanja emerged victorious, defeating Mohamedou Isufu, a former prime minister. International observers, closely monitoring the electoral process, widely regarded the election as generally free and fair. This validation from the international community provided a sense of legitimacy to the outcome and indicated a positive step towards establishing a more democratic political landscape in Niger. At the center of this tempest was President Mamadou Tanja, a figure who had held the reins of power since 1999. Initially hailed as a beacon of hope for the nation, Tanja soon began to draw criticism for his seemingly insatiable thirst for authority. It was as if he had developed an insidious craving to extend his presidency, even if it meant trampling over the hallowed grounds of constitutional term limits. As whispers of Tanja's controversial intentions reached every corner of Niger, the tension in the air grew palpable. The people, once hopeful for a brighter future, watched with bated breath as their leader made brazen moves to cling onto power. With each passing day, it became abundantly clear that the political landscape was shifting and not in a favorable direction. In a calculated display of audacity, Tanja dissolved the parliament, sending shockwaves through the nation. The very institution that was meant to safeguard the democratic ideals upon which Niger was built was abruptly dismantled, leaving the people disoriented and disillusioned. It was a treacherous maneuver that further deepened the rift between the government and its citizens. But Tanja's audacity did not stop there. He proceeded to amend the constitution, a move that was met with widespread condemnation. The people realized that their leader, whom they had entrusted with their hopes and dreams, was now manipulating the very fabric of their democracy. It was a bitter pill to swallow, a betrayal that stung like a thousand scorpions. As the storm clouds of discontent gathered above Niger, the people found themselves at a crossroads. They had a choice to make, succumb to the oppressive weight of a leader drunk with power or rise up and reclaim their nation's destiny. The stakes were high, but the spirit of resilience burned bright within their hearts. They yearned for a leader who would uphold the principles of democracy and steer them towards a better future. Little did they know that their collective frustration and determination would soon ignite a spark, a spark that would set ablaze the revolution for a new Africa. The events that would unfold in the days to come would not only reshape the fate of Niger, but also inspire a wave of change throughout the region. The people were about to embark on a journey that would test their mettle, challenge their resilience, and redefine the very notion of governance in Africa. The tension escalated as President Tanja's hunger for power grew, his attempts to consolidate his authority and extend his presidency reached a fever pitch. Like a relentless predator stalking its prey, he relentlessly pursued his ambitions, disregarding the democratic principles that had once held Niger together. As news of Tanja's power grab spread like wildfire, opposition groups, civil society organizations, and international actors rose from the shadows, their voices echoing with a sense of alarm. They saw the very essence of democracy being corroded, and they were not about to stand idly by. The stage was set for a battle of ideologies, a clash between those who believed in the sanctity of democratic principles and those who sought to bend them to their will. Lines were drawn in the sand, dividing the nation into two factions, those who clung to the remnants of Tanja's support and those who saw through his charade. 
The political and social divide that emerged was akin to a gaping chasm, threatening to swallow the unity that had once bound the people of Niger. Frustration simmered beneath the surface, like molten lava ready to erupt from a dormant volcano. The air crackled with tension, as if a storm was brewing, waiting for the right moment to unleash its fury. The dissenting voices grew louder, their calls for justice and adherence to democratic norms reverberating through the streets. They were not mere spectators, they were the guardians of Niger's democratic soul, refusing to let it be tarnished by the whims of a power-hungry leader. The people, too, felt the weight of their nation's destiny on their shoulders. They saw Tanja's actions as a direct affront to their rights, their freedom, and their future. Their frustration transformed into a burning determination, a resolve to fight for the principles they held dear. In this battle of ideologies, the stakes were high. The outcome would determine the trajectory of Niger's history and send ripples throughout the continent. The people knew that their struggle was not just about one man's thirst for power, it was a fight for the very soul of Africa, a testament to the resilience and determination of its people. And so, with hearts ablaze and voices united, they prepared to take a stand. The stage was set, the battle lines drawn, and the revolution for a new Africa was about to be ignited. It was a pivotal moment, a turning point that would shape the course of Niger's future and inspire generations to come. The people would not back down. They would fight for their democracy, their rights, and their vision of a better Africa. On February 18, 2010, the simmering discontent within Niger reached its boiling point. Like a thunderclap in the night, a group of military officers, fueled by their dissatisfaction with President Tanja's desperate attempts to cling to power, orchestrated a coup d'etat that would reverberate throughout the nation. These officers, whose hearts burned with a fervent desire to restore democratic order, united under the banner of the Supreme Council for the Restoration of Democracy, CSRD. They were the vanguard, the embodiment of the people's hopes for a brighter future. With steely determination, they meticulously planned their mission to overthrow President Tanja and liberate Niger from his grasp. As the night unfolded, the streets of the capital city were shrouded in darkness, punctuated only by the clandestine whispers of the conspirators. They moved swiftly and silently, their steps guided by a shared purpose. In the shadows, they strategized, mapping out the intricate details of their audacious operation. The hour of reckoning arrived, and the coup began with a surge of adrenaline. Like a well-choreographed dance, the military officers executed their plan flawlessly. They seized control of key government institutions, their actions synchronized with military precision. The once mighty fortress of President Tanja's regime crumbled before their eyes, leaving him disoriented and powerless. Amid the chaos, a figure emerged from the ranks of the CSRD, General Salu Jibo. With a commanding presence and unwavering resolve, he stepped into the spotlight, assuming the mantle of leadership. General Jibo became the embodiment of the people's hopes, their beacon of stability in a sea of uncertainty. The dissolution of Tanja's government was swift and decisive. The once untouchable seats of power were emptied, their occupants scattered like leaves in the wind. The people, who had endured years of frustration and disillusionment, watched as their oppressor was toppled, their spirits lifted by the promise of a new beginning. General Jibo, now at the helm of the CSRD, took charge of the shattered remnants of the government. He understood the weight of responsibility resting on his shoulders, the expectations of a nation yearning for change. With determination etched on his face, he declared the establishment of a transitional regime, a bridge between the dark days of Tanja's rule and the dawn of a new era. The nation held its breath as the CSRD set about the arduous task of rebuilding Niger. General Jibo's leadership brought a semblance of stability as he initiated measures to restore democratic principles, address economic woes, and root out corruption. The people watched with cautious optimism, hoping that their sacrifices and the courage of the coup would pave the way for a brighter future. The coup of February 18, 2010 would forever be etched in Niger's history as a pivotal moment of change. It was a testament to the power of the people, the indomitable spirit that refused to succumb to the shackles of oppression. The revolution for a new Africa had found its footing in Niger, and its impact would resonate far beyond its borders.
but yet the journey was far from over. But following the coup, the CSRD initiated a transitional period aimed at restoring democracy and addressing the challenges faced by Niger. The Chunta implemented political, economic, and governance reforms, including the drafting of a new constitution and the establishment of a civilian-led government. The transitional regime sought to create an inclusive political environment, promote accountability, and laid the foundation for democratic governance. In 2011, Niger held presidential and parliamentary elections as part of the transition back to civilian rule. These elections marked a significant milestone, signaling the country's commitment to democracy and the peaceful transfer of power. Mohamedou Isufu, a prominent opposition leader, won the presidential election and assumed office as the new president of Niger. Isufu's administration focused on combating corruption, improving governance, and promoting economic development. The Niger coup had a profound impact not only within Niger, but also across the region of West Africa. The events in Niger served as an inspiration and catalyst for democratic movements and aspirations for change in neighboring countries. The successful overthrow of President Tanja's regime sparked a wave of popular uprisings and protests in countries like Burkina Faso and Mali, leading to the overthrow of long-standing leaders who had overstayed their mandates. After the coup, Niger faced numerous challenges including security threats from armed groups, economic disparities, and structural issues related to governance and development. The government, under President Isufu's leadership, implemented measures to address these challenges. This included security sector reforms, regional cooperation to combat terrorism and insurgency, and efforts to diversify the economy and promote inclusive development. The Niger coup and the subsequent transition to civilian rule also had a significant impact on the notion of a new Africa. It demonstrated that popular movements and demands for democratic governance could lead to the removal of entrenched leaders and foster a new era of political change in the region. The events in Niger inspired citizens across Africa to demand accountable leadership, transparent governance, and respect for democratic principles. But the Niger coup did not just end here. On July 26, 2023, a dramatic turn of events unfolded in Niger as General Omar Chiani and the Presidential Guard took control of the Presidential Palace in Niamey, effectively imprisoning President Bazoum, which triggered widespread concern both regionally and internationally over the nation's stability. The military swiftly announced a series of measures, including the suspension of institutions, closure of land and air borders, and the imposition of a curfew, further heightening tensions. In response to these developments, Niger's foreign minister, Hasumi Masudu, appealed to the military to release President Bazoum and urged for dialogue to resolve their grievances. The economic community of West African states, along with the United States, France, and the United Nations, strongly denounced the coup, labeling it as unconstitutional and expressing their disapproval. Consequently, President Mohamed Bazoum was forcibly removed from power by a faction of soldiers led by Colonel Amadou Abdurmane. Abdurmane justified their actions by citing the deteriorating security situation and perceived mismanagement of governance. Under the new regime, Niger's borders were sealed, a nationwide curfew was enforced, and all governmental institutions were temporarily suspended, plunging the country into a state of political turmoil. In analyzing the series of coups that occurred in Niger during the late 20th century and in recent years, it becomes evident that the country has experienced a turbulent and volatile political history. The coups of 1974, 1996, 1999, 2010, and 2023 each brought about significant shifts in leadership and governance, leaving a lasting impact on Niger's political landscape. These coups were driven by various factors, ranging from perceived political deadlock and economic concerns to dissatisfaction with governance and calls for a fresh start. While some coups were met with regional and international condemnation, others were seen as opportunities for change and the potential for a return to stability. Throughout these tumultuous periods, Niger witnessed the rise and fall of political leaders, military involvement in governance, and the promise of transitioning back to civilian rule. The outcomes of these power struggles varied, 
with the establishment of military councils, the assumption of power by military leaders, and eventually the holding of elections. The international community played a role in monitoring the democratic processes that followed the coups, providing validation to the election outcomes when they were deemed generally free and fair. This external validation was crucial in enhancing Niger's credibility on the global stage and reinforcing the country's commitment to democratic principles. However, it is important to recognize that the political instability caused by these coups has had long-lasting consequences for Niger's development and governance. The frequent disruptions and changes in leadership have posed challenges to the consolidation of democratic institutions, hindered socioeconomic progress, and contributed to a sense of political fragility within the nation. In conclusion, the coups in Niger have shaped the country's political trajectory, with each event leaving a significant imprint on its governance and stability. While there have been efforts to transition towards democratic rule, the legacy of these coups underscores the ongoing need for political stability, inclusive governance, and sustained socioeconomic development in Niger. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe as this would help our videos reach a wider audience. See you in the next one.